The eSports game Valorant awards $1 million to the winning team of the World Championship Tournament. Head coach Christine Potter Chi made history as the first female coach to win the tournament in 2023, along with her team, Evil Geniuses. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Valorant Champions Grand Finals. It's actually um, pretty crazy. I, I, it happened, it started last year at Champions in the Grand Finals. Right before we walked out into the Grand Finals, my star player, Demon One, it was me and him. And he turned around and looked at me and he said, do you think they're gonna be the loudest for me when I walk out? And I said, of course they are, Max. Of course they're gonna be the loudest for you. Demon One! And he walked out, the crowd went wild, and then and I'm just sitting there like in awe, just in shock because, you know, I feel the stadium rumbling. And then they called my name and I go out and it was noticeably louder than anyone else's cheers. And so as I'm walking out, I just, I, it was like a deer in the headlights moment for me. And that's when I, you know, I, I realized it then and I was just soaking it all in. I was just looking around at all the cell phones and that's when I realized this is pretty big. <laughs> it's a pretty big deal. Potter walked out to this crowd, the cheers, the yes. love that they received. I mean, for Potter especially, uh, both of them used to play on the teams they currently coach, but a lot of people doubted her, Mimi. A lot of people criticized her, but she's answered back and she's proved why she's one of the best. So Valorant is played in a five versus five setting. Your objective is to be able to plant the spike and you're either on attack or defense. And if you're on the defense, your objective is to defuse the spike. On the attack side, you have to plant the spike. And if you kill all five of, five of them, it doesn't matter. But in order to win, you do have to complete either of these objectives. The proudest moment in my career so far, because the obvious one is, of course, champions, um, 2023. You know, lifting that trophy with the team was a dream that I didn't even think I should dream. You know, it seemed that far away. That was a life-changing moment. But I'll say the one that I think about the most or was the most life-changing, looking back now even, is uh, my first win in ESWC 2006. That win really boosted my confidence. It boosted a lot of different things about me. I started becoming really proud of gaming. I was telling everyone about it. Um, prior to that, it was very much kind of a double life that I was living. So yeah, I think the first one was probably the most important one to me. My journey from being professional player to coach was pretty straightforward. Um, I had been competing for so long and I was an in-game leader, a captain of the team for my whole career. So I think it just, everything kind of fell in line and it was just a natural next step for me. And um, yeah, as soon as I kind of realized that competing was done, I was getting much older uh, and time was just kind of flying past me. And as I watched my peers, having babies, making families. I just knew that I needed to take a next step in something for growth, for progress, for something else. So um, even though I'm such a competitor and I didn't want to, I had to like, take the next step. The motivation to take the career switch at the time was definitely due to underperforming. Um, I really believed that I wanted to believe that I still had it. And I knew that my mind was still there. I loved problem solving in game and I loved uh, being the in-game leader for a squad, but my mechanics just couldn't keep up. So 
yeah, that's just one of the things you have to kind of accept is um, there are some Zoomers out there that are dying to take over your spot and they're getting better and better. So yeah, I think it's exciting, but it, it was kind of heartbreaking at the time for sure. If they're there with your jibble, we, we tuck. Okay guys, we're, we're, it's a sniffing mission. If no one shoots us, then we just keep walking. The key things that I learned as a player mm, that I put into my coaching style today is a lot of things, you know? When I was a player, there were so many uh, wishes that I had. I wished that um, there was structure. I wished that somebody else was looking over my shoulder and giving me some tips and tricks. And so for me, especially the first couple years that I transitioned and started coaching, it was exactly that. When I watch Potter, that's what makes these teams so amazing is the coaches know how to innovate. They know how to create set plays, but they're also willing to relinquish all that control and give it to, back to the players. So one thing that makes a strong player is just understanding that it's a grind. EG's players, they play with this level of fearlessness that Potter has instilled in them. And the similar thing about these teams is they both play for fun. So I don't think they'll get scared today. I prepare before a match in, I think pretty much the same way every time, like uh, little small fun things that I can control, right? So for instance, I'm not that superstitious, but if we won, a match um, with certain jewelry or socks or something funny like that, then I'll make sure I wear that same thing the next week um, until we lose at least. And then the obvious things, um, you know, physically making sure that we're not tired, making sure that we've dry ran even our meals before the day of, I'll make sure that we all know what we're gonna be eating whether that food is something that is gonna give us the right kind of energy. You know, these are all things that you have to have experienced prior to and make sure that on match day, you're trying to min-max your entire life as best as you can. It's definitely a lot of nerves the whole day. It's kind of like what I would um, compare it to is on the day of the match leading up to, it's kind of the same as when you know you have a flight the next day or when you know you have a big appointment that you've been waiting for all week long um, and the night before you're really you can't sleep and things like that you know it's, it's those same feelings but I think that's definitely where the age and experience comes in for most competitors is you learn to kind of channel that in the right places um, but of course I still get nervous I mean I I get nervous all the time I think the most challenging moments in my career as a coach is definitely juggling different personalities. You know, I think um, trying to highlight and activate five different people that come from five different backgrounds. <laughs> juggling those, all those strengths and plus accounting for personality in order to make all five shine together feels like an impossible task, but that is what my task is. I come up with gaming strategies, a lot of them in my dreams, a lot of them daydreaming. My entire life is just thinking about gaming and problem solving. At first, it feels like all of my real life things helped bleed into my gaming knowledge. And now it seems like all the problem solving strategies and things that I've uncovered in gaming somehow some way bleed into my real life now as an older person so it goes both ways I've learned a lot in uh in in both my normie life versus my gaming life I think the coolest part about esports something that has been true even way back 20 years ago when I was uh, going to like little basements or traveling across the pond to Europe. Something that's remained true is how global esports is and how gaming kind of doesn't have that many barriers. You know, when you're online, I can run across a Montreal player with similar ping, someone from Brazil. And so, um, yeah, I think how global it is and how accessible it is, it feels like it definitely brings a lot of different communities together. I would have never learned about half the things I've learned um, from different people from different countries. 
I think the role of coaching um, is definitely evolving in the in the esports industry. I think having a real career that is sustainable with longevity is something that the youngsters can really uh, look forward to. So hopefully, hopefully that is the case. And um, yeah, coaching could be a sustainable career for the next generation, hopefully. My ambitions for the future are somewhat confusing at times, and I think they change. You know, before it was just trying to win something, and now that I've won something, it's winning more, right? But now I want to be a little bit more greedy. I want to, you know, everyone calls me the GOAT. I want to be able to say I am the GOAT proudly and just say it out loud and no one can debate it. So yeah, I guess that's my next goal is to make sure everyone knows that I am the greatest. <laughs>